G'day viewers and welcome to Heavenly Tai Chi and Yoga. My name is Todd and today I've got a special episode for you where we create a yoga flow sequence based on a particular movie. So today's movie is Tenet and the scene we're going to be focusing on is foiling catamarans. Now these catamarans can go at up to 50 knots because what they do is they rise up out of the water so there's no in swell impacting the speed. So to race on these catamarans and perform at the highest levels requires some special individuals. And we're gonna focus on the requisites for these people. So they require a strong core, strong foundation, which is a balance, great flexibility, strong arms, and the ability to react in pressure situation. That's a heightened awareness or mindfulness. So if you want to learn more about this particular scene, then check out Sale GP's website where they've got a particular blog post which explains how this scene was filmed for the movie. So with all that in mind, let's get to it. So we're standing in a nice easy stance to start the practice today and we're starting in our what we call the horse riding stance. So we want our feet just to be on hips width distance apart and we're going to slowly move from side to side. This is called sideways swing, it's a qigong movement. So a couple of key points about this movement. We want a nice long spine. We want the feet rooted into the ground. This is our balance, this is our foundation. What I was talking about, one of the things we're focused on. Now we've got this twisting motion here. You'll notice in the scene, we've got these, what these guys, they're called grinders. And what they do is they, they raise the sails and they trim the sails to get the best performance from the boat. So in order to do that, they must be able to move with control and awareness. So this particular movement is gonna help with that and we're gonna make sure we're activating the core here and a nice long spine. So now let's change and bring our hands and we'll tap, tap up the top of our shoulders and in the back, we're gonna tapping around our kidney area here. This is called drumming. So we're creating a, a sideways twisting movement, which is fantastic for the core, fantastic for awareness also. It's a qigong sequence, so qigong literally translates as working with your life energy. So unique thing about my practice and what I teach is I incorporate qigong, tai chi, martial arts, um, the whole gamut of physical movement practice to give you the best possible experience. <laughs> so. Moving from side to side here, it's a great as a little warm up as well for your practice. And just relaxing the body. Let's relax the body as much as possible here. And we'll slowly stop there. Let's extend the left hand out in front. Let's now take the right hand on top of the left fingers and we'll stretch those left fingers back towards the shoulder. We get a nice stretch underneath the wrist here and then relax the hand there. Now let's take up our right hand Take the left fingers to the top of the right fingers and we're slowly drawing those right fingers back towards the shoulders and relax there. Let's take our left hand across our body. Let's take our right arm on top of our left arm above the elbow. We don't want to be the elbow. We're never on the joints, okay? And we extend our left hand across the body. Nice stretch here through the right shoulder capsule. Left shoulder capsule, sorry. Easy to get confused when you're moving hands about. Now let's change over to the opposite side. Right hand reaching out this time, left hand on the bicep, creating that tension in the shoulder. Make sure you keep your long spine all the way through. Let's take some nice shoulder curls here, rotating the shoulders back and down, drawing the shoulder blades together, creating that length in the spine by activating the shoulder muscles, supporting the spine. That's gonna create nice length in the spine. And then we'll go through some neck circles here. Start clockwise to start off with nice long spine as we're doing this and then changing the opposite direction 
couple of times, nice range of movement. So now we're gonna come down to what we call our four point base. We're gonna move into our cat-cow sequence. So the important part of this, this sequence here is all about alignment and structure. We wanna make sure the shoulders are stacked over our wrist, our hips are stacked over our knees, our legs are parallel here, and we're not tucking the feet in here, keeping them nice and parallel. You've got a nice balancing point here and you should be stacked accordingly. Keep the fingers nice and wide spread here and this cat-cow sequence is going to be working on the core, a key part of what we are talking about earlier, working on strengthening the core. So I'm going to draw the belly in and extend the shoulder girdle up into what we call the angry cat. And let's make sure the shoulders, the, the neck is nice and relaxed here. And then we release, we lengthen the tailbone down and lifting the head up. And then inhale, drawing the belly in. Really drawing the belly in. Activate that core. Extend the shoulder girdle to the sky and then lifting the head up. And we'll do this one more time. Let's tuck the chin to the chest. Extend the shoulder girdle, draw the belly in, and then release and come back to the starting point. Let's bring the toes again. Let's sit back into child's pose. Let's extend the hands out nice and long as we come into our extended child's pose here. Now we're going to move into what we call the rolling wave sequence. So let's extend the right leg back. Let's extend the left leg back. We're going to be working on the core in high plank or phalakasana. From here, we're going to make sure our head is lengthened away. Our toes are drawing, our heels are drawing back. Nice long spine. Shoulders are stacked over the wrist. Keep that alignment and structure in place. Now we're going to lift the hips up to the sky as we come into our downward facing dog. Our feet should be about a fist width distance apart. And we're working our heels towards our floor. And we're pushing away with our hands. Our head is nice and relaxed. I'm going to slowly pedal the feet back and forward. So this is an active position, this downward dog, Ardha Mukha Shubhanasana. Lengthening away, shoulders are nice and relaxed. Fingers are working into the mat, pressing into the ground. So from here, we're going to rise up on the balls of the feet. We're going to tuck the pelvis and the chin, and we're going to roll vertebra by vertebra until the shoulders stack over the wrist, and then we're going to slowly lower down into Shadaranga. Slowly lowering down and work on strengthening the arms here. As we're in the shutter run, and then we're going to press back up into our plank pose, high plank phalakasana, and then we're going to slowly lower down one more time in the shutteranga. It's really strengthening and work the arms here, work the shoulders, and then pressing away, and then we're going to slowly draw the hips back to the sky into our downward facing dog. Now let's take the knees down there for the moment. That's super challenging, that movement there. The rolling wave into the phallocast and the high plank and then the chaturanga. Now, if you find it challenging here, when you're, when you're in that position, little modification you can do, you can bring your knees down. So when you're coming down to here, you want to make sure where you can that the shoulders stack over the wrists. Right elbows over the wrist. You're coming into this movement here, that shadaranga. Now, shadaranga is low plank. So we're going from high plank into low plank. Super challenging. Let's do that one more time. So we'll step our feet back and come into our high plank or phallocasada. And then we'll draw our hips back to the sky. From here, we're going to Rise up under the balls of the feet. We're going to tuck the chin and the pelvis as we roll vertebra by vertebra. Shoulders stack over our wrists, then we slowly lower down. Slowly lowering down into Shadaranga. Hold here for a moment. That's also okay to come back all the way down. Now let's draw the head up as we come into our upward dog and come into a floating upward dog. 
extend the head up to the sky, and then we'll tuck the chin to the chest. Let's untuck the toes as we roll back into downward facing dog. Take a couple of breaths here. Relaxing here for the moment. Super challenging movement, this. But it's going to strengthen the arms. It's going to strengthen the core. It's going to work the legs. Super powerful movement. Great spinal mobility in this. So it's a, it's a, it's a movement that does a lot of things. Now we're going to draw the feet up. We're going to go through this movement one more time. Rolling wave. Shoulder stacks over the wrist. Then we'll lower down into Shalaranga. Oh, let's work those shoulders. Work those hands. Then we'll press back up. Back into Falakasana, into high plank. That's a just so we're on the balls of the feet in high plank. Working that core here. And then we'll slowly lower down into Shadaranga. Let's take knees down and we'll slowly draw our head up. Nice upward facing dog, floating up dog, pressing into the mat with the hands. Lifting the head up now, we'll tuck the chin to chest, untuck the toes as we roll all the way back into downward facing dog. Woo! And then we'll slowly come to our knees. Let's work our hands here for a moment. Let's rotate the wrists. Let's extend the hands nice and long into our extended child's pose. Now let's come into a cross-legged seating position. We're going to go into what we call Bharad Vajasana, which is a seated twist. Again, it's a great for work in the core. We get some spinal length here as well, as we're talking before about the grinders and moving from side to side. You really want a strong core for that. You can want the arms nice and strong. You want to have a nice open chest as well. Because when you're in this particular movement for a period of time, you want a movement that's going to counteract that particular way of being for a period of time. So, as we go into Bharava Jasa, keep the spine nice and long at all times. Move in and out of the twist slowly with control, with awareness, with mindfulness. What we talked about earlier, heightened awareness, right? If you're on a sailing catamaran, you're moving from side to side all the time. You want to have a complete 100% focus on what your job is and what you need to do for that particular, particular scene or that particular race that you're in. So let's take the left hand to the outside of the right knee. Prep, preparation before moving into the twist. Okay, keep the spine nice and long. Let's draw the buttocks, the fleshy part away, so make sure we're sitting on our sit bone. Left hand to the knee, extend the right hand up to the sky. Inhale, exhale. Let's draw that right hand behind as we come onto the palm or the fingers. We want to make sure we've got a nice long line right from our hips all the way up to our shoulders. And then we inhale and then exhale. We twist over to the right hand side, looking over the right shoulder. A nice length here through this movement. Twisting is also great for digestion. And we slowly relax, let your body draw yourself back to the center line and then move over to the opposite side. So let's take the right hand onto the left knee. Let's extend that left hand up to the sky. Let's inhale, exhale, draw that left hand behind us. Then we inhale, exhale, release. We move into the twist to the left hand side. Really think about length here and drawing the belly in. Strong core. And then we slowly release and come back to the centre line. And now let's make a little modification here. Let's take the back of the hand, the knife edge. Place that against the right knee. It's going to get a little bit more purchase in the twist so we can go a little bit deeper. Inhale. Exhale. Take that right hand behind us. Find that length before you move into the twisting motion. And inhale. Draw the belly and you're twisting over to the right hand side. 
Really find that space, find the length in the breath. Feel super calm. It's a challenging position, but I know you can do it. And then slowly release, let your body track yourself back to the center line. Now we're gonna move over to the opposite side. So take the knife edge of the right hand, place that against the left knee. Extend the left hand up to the sky. Inhale, exhale, take that left hand behind us. Find that length, very important, find that length first. Inhale, in and out through the nose. And then we twist over to the left hand side. We've got that extra purchase with our right hand there against the left knee, creating a little bit more traction in the twist. And then we slowly release and come back to the center line. So now that we've gone through the, the nice twisty motion, strength in the core, let's move through some mobility movements. So I'll come and lie on the back here. And let's draw the right knee up. Let's take the left hand over to the right knee and we slowly draw that over to the left hand side. Let's get nice length through the body here. Let's take the right hand at shoulder height and we'll look over to our right hand. So spinal twist. Really work on the breath here, lengthen the breath, find that space, that calmness. And then we'll draw the right knee back to the centre line. Let's draw the left knee up, let's take the right hand to the left knee and we take the left knee over to the right hand side. Slowly with control. And then we look over to our left hand. Again, we're working on that breath, finding that length, creating that space, being calm. When it's a super stressful situation, you come back to the breath, find that balance. And then we'll slowly draw that left knee up. Let's draw both knees up to the chest. And we're drawing the knees into the chest here. And then we're going to slowly roll, work on the spinal mobility. And then we'll finally come back up to our seat position, where we finish the class. There we go. So there you go, viewers. I hope you enjoyed the class today. A quick flow based on the movie Tenet, and in particular, the falling catamaran scene, and what's required, the physical requirements, to be able to perform at the highest level. Um, if you like the video, give it a like, got any comments, then please let me know in the comments section below. I also recommend checking out my other yoga videos here and also check out my Tai Chi and Qigong videos. If this is your first time here, hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification so you get notified when I publish new videos. Until that time, have an awesome day wherever you are in the world and namaste. Namaste.